Hi, we're going to be taking a look today at 9.2, graphing simple rational functions. We've graphed things before in here with charts and with equations and with expressions, but today we're going to be taking a look at something called a hyperbola. So what I've done to help you out here is I've gone ahead and filled in this chart because I want you to notice a pattern that develops. When you look at your x and y value, you might not see right well, 4 and 1 fourth, you know, who cares, 3 and 1 third. But look at its counterpart with a negative x value. Same y value, but negative. x and y's, same values except negative. So I get this kind of mirror image. So as I plot these, and you'll see that I went ahead and plotted the points and drew them in over here to the right, you notice that they never cross either of the axes. They get very, very close but they never actually cross it. And that's because there's certain values that you'll never get. For instance, looking at 1 over x, what if I plugged in 0 for x? I'd get an error message on my calculator because it's undefined. So my x value can't be 0. So we put this dotted line in called an asymptote. I like to call it a wall because it basically blocks my graph from going any further than that particular point. Same thing occurs for my y. When I get my x-axis here, I can't get a y value of 0. Why? Well, because if I divide anything, 1 divided by anything is going to get me a value, not 0. So I get a y asymptote over here. So when I do the graph of this, again, it's called a hyperbola, not a hyperbola, but it means we're going to have several parts, which we'll get into what they're called here momentarily. The x-axis ends up being our horizontal asymptote, because my y value doesn't change here but my x values do. So it seems strange x-axis is y equals 0, but it is. And the y-axis is a vertical asymptote, which is x equals 0. Now these can move, and we'll see that as we move along, but when we're looking at a base graph like y equals 1 over x, that's what our asymptotes will be. Our domain and range are all non-zero numbers but not the asymptote. That does not get included within my domain and range. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we get into some more of the example problems. And then the graph has two symmetrical parts, two equal parts, that are called branches. And for each part that's in the positive quadrant, there's another part down here in the negative. So let's actually look at one of these. If you have access to a graphing calculator, even if you don't, there's places that you can get them online. You just Google online graphing calculator and you can find some excellent ones. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at this particular expression by typing it into the graphing calculator. So, And it's very important that I put the parentheses around my x plus 3. Otherwise, the calculator is going to follow order of operations, and I'm going to have an issue with this. So what ends up happening here, when I go ahead and graph it, is you start to see where my vertical asymptote is going to be. Now, that's not part of my graph. So what I typically do is I start to count over and on the calculator, I can see there's 1, 2, 3. So it looks like I'm going to have a vertical asymptote here at 3. And again, that's an x equals line, so x equals 3. So I also start to look sideways and say, you know, it kind of looks like my graphs are both going to hug negative 1 where my y value is, but never go across there. So if that's the case, I would draw a horizontal line across there, and that would be y equals negative 1. So take a second to go ahead and look at the equation we have for our line. Look at my x value, and look at what I have here as my expression. That might be familiar to a shift that we've done before. When we had, remember, x minus h, same thing going on here. It's the opposite of what you would see. So this plus 3 means my vertical asymptote is going to be at negative. y equals negative 1. There's my negative 1 on the end. So that tells me that my 
horizontal asymptote can be found out here whatever numbers on the edge and if I don't see one it ends up being what zero okay as far as the graph itself goes if you just hit second graph or if you're doing the online calculator it's there already you can go ahead and just take values but what we're gonna do here as far as values go is we're gonna use ones that are two to the right and two to the left of my asymptote so for instance in this case I would be looking to use the negative 5 value, the negative 4 value, and again this is for x so I'm going to take them straight off the calculator. I could also do this if I didn't have a graphing calculator by just substituting the values in. So when I go ahead and I plot those points that's going to give me enough of an idea of where my branches are starting that I could actually go ahead and graph my curve or my branch going for each direction. So now that I've got that drawn, let's see here, what does this actually do to the graph? Okay, My A value, when I go ahead and look at this, that's going to determine for me where my branches are at. Because you'll notice if you were to look back up at the top one, that my two branches originally were in quadrant one and quadrant three but I had a positive number on top of my fraction. Now, I'm down here below, and I take a look, and I see it's a negative. So, if the A value is greater than zero, if it's positive, I'm gonna have quadrant one and three branches. If it's less than zero, I'm gonna have quadrant two and four branches, and that can come in handy knowing where things belong. And then the width of my graph is going to be determined on how large that number is. The larger the number, the wider it's going to be. Okay. What does H do to the graph? It either, you can say, it either tells me my vertical asymptote, but it also is going to be my left or right shift. K, the value on the end, as you can see here, is going to be my horizontal asymptote, at least for the time being, and it's going to be my up and down shift. Like that's a lot of stuff to take in, but it gives us a lot of good information that we can use to make a graph even if we don't have a graphing calculator. So if we take a moment and flip over, let's take a look at one from scratch here and see how this works. So let's take a look at number one. I can see right away if I go ahead and I set my denominator equal to zero, I can get my vertical asymptote, which is going to be a positive two. And I can get my horizontal asymptote from the value on the end of my equation, y equals one. Once I get those drawn in, now I can take a peek and I can try to figure out where these points are going to be. Now remember the hint that I gave from before. We always want to plug in values based on our vertical asymptote. So since it's at 2, I want values 2 that are to the left of my asymptote and 2 that are to the right. So when I get those, I can go ahead and plug those in and I'll help you out Again, whether you plug them in manually or you use the function on the graphing calculator, any of those are fine. And we'll go ahead and we'll get those points plotted. And again, sometimes they can be very, very tight to the asymptotes. And then we can draw them in. But our big thing here is getting the asymptotes. And I look at it that way. So again, not a real big deal. So then the last thing that we're going to take a look at in this kind of shortened version of our notes from today is going to be figuring out not only our horizontal and vertical asymptotes, but also the domain and range. Now again, domain and range are just your x and y values, what they possibly can be. So we're actually going to take a look at number three here first, because this is like the ones we were doing on the front. 
my horizontal asymptote is my y. So y equals 4. I just steal that from the end of my expression. My vertical asymptote comes from setting the denominator equal to 0, which means my x value is going to be 3. Now domain and range, remember, is x and y. So how do you think this is going to match up? Exactly how you would think. Vertical asymptote is x, so is my domain. These go together. My value is going to be all reals, that's what my double lined r is, except any asymptotes. So any number can be x in this one except 3, because 3 would make my fraction undefined. That's how that works every time. Range is going to go with your horizontal asymptote. So all reals not equal to 4, because those match up directly. So it's not a real bad job or a real bad idea here working with these. Well, what happens, though, if that's not on the end? What happens if I start getting x's up in the numerator? So let's take a peek at number 1 and see if we can get some help from the box up above. My horizontal asymptote is going to change a little bit. Whenever you have an x value, and these are the same, so if I was looking at an exponent here, these would each be 1 and they'd be the same for example 2. What you're going to end up finding is that if those are the same, you're just going to divide the coefficients. So in this case, my horizontal asymptote is just 2 divided by 1 or 2. But that's only when you have x values in the numerator and the denominator. The vertical asymptote still is the same. You're going to set the denominator equal to 0 and solve for x. The domain and range also don't change. Vertical asymptote still goes with domain. All reals except any domain value that I happen to have. Okay? Excuse me, my asymptote value. Range goes with horizontal asymptote. All reals except any horizontal asymptote values that you have. Okay? And that's all we're doing here. So again, if we started from scratch here in part 3, state the domain and range, well, I really could use the vertical and horizontal asymptotes first. So again, if I look, horizontal is my y equals, found by just dividing the coefficients. Vertical asymptote, found by setting the denominator equal to 0 and solving for x. And then again, vertical asymptote goes with domain, all reals except my vertical asymptote and my range, all reals except for my horizontal asymptote. Again, if you have any other issues, you're going to need to come in, but this should give you a pretty good start on seeing how all of these different types work in this section.